everyone, it's Gregory here to do your astrology and tarot forecast for the week starting the 10th of March and going through until the 17th of March 2014. I'm really glad to be back. I've been away for two weeks. I've been in Israel for um, about 12 days on a really just wonderful trip. It's been so inspirational and meaningful. Uh, it's just been wonderful. So I'm back and um, I would like to have a look at what's happening for you this week in terms of the astrological influences and I'll also draw some tarot cards to give the kind of key themes for the signs of the zodiac and see the three main things that you need to be aware of. So starting on the 10th of March, the first thing is that the moon goes into Cancer in the 12th house is in there. And what that means is that um, on an emotional level, you're really going to want to connect with family, you're going to want to connect with friends, and you're going to want to uh, really stay at home, not kind of reach out too much, help other people, be in service mode, um, be really all about giving other people and how you can serve them. So I think if you want to um, ensure a sense of ease and comfort in yourself, then asking the question, how can I serve, is really going to serve you serve you in turn the most. On the 11th of March, so on Tuesday, the moon is at 23% and it's in the first house in Cancer still. And this means that if it's 23%, it means that it's kind of reaching a culmination point in terms of its um, placement in that sign. The moon stays in each sign of the zodiac for about two and a half days. And 23 is almost near the 30 mark, so it's a culmination point. And what that means is that that emotional kind of um, feeling, the, the, the groundedness, the emotional well-being, the wanting to give emotionally and also to receive emotionally, is going to really be at its strongest on the 11th, on Tuesday. So the beginning of the week is really all about connecting with other people in a meaningful way. And March overall has had a really... Um, strong focus on the emotions, on the feelings, and this is a time where um, you're really experiencing new feelings and experiencing new people um, in your life. So this could have to do with romance, it could do with helping people on a charitable level, charitable level, but really it's about um, experiencing things on an emotional level that you haven't experienced as of yet. The next day, Wednesday the 12th, sees the um, sees a grand trine in water there. A grand trine is always um, a sign of something flowing really well, um, a big aptitude for something or a major talent. And the major talent is between your ascendant, so your rising sign in Cancer. It's um, between the midheaven in Pisces in the 8th house, and it's between Saturn and Scorpio in the 5th house. And the reason I kind of hesitated there a little bit is um, the chart is ruled by Cancer at the moment, and the, the, the planet or the heavenly body that rules Cancer is the moon. So what I've just said for the 11th and 12th, not only are feelings very important, but it's central um, to the whole week because the chart is ruled by that moon feeling emotional quality. Okay, But on the 12th, the kind of real talent lies between is how you see yourself as an emotional person, how you're able to structure your feelings in terms of your personal life. So this is with people in your life, especially on a romantic level. And it's also um, what you're able to bring to the world. So the midheaven in Pisces there in the 8th house in terms of intimate romantic relationships. So around this time between the 11th and the 13th, I really see you um, crystallize your feelings. It could, this could be your feelings towards someone. It could be that you realize you love someone. Um, and then by the 13th, that you really structure that and communicate that to that person. It could be that you discover that you love something um, in your life, uh, an activity, a, a creative outlet. And it crystallizes in your own mind that you become aware that you actually do love this and then you're able to act on it by the time the 13th comes around. The 13th sees the moon moving into Leo in the first house. So the change in terms of how you see yourself is it's going to be less feeling, more confident, more fiery, more wanting to take action. And the interesting thing is that the moon squares Saturn in the fifth house. So expect some friction between uh, like a... Um, what's it called? Um, it's like a... Um, 
you know when you do something and you get a response to it it's like it's not a fallout it's a anyway it's because you've been so emotionally aware and perceptive your ego kind of steps in now on the 13th and it creates some friction between this emotional structure that you've got and it tries to shake it up for you and it tries to urge you away from your emotional side so expect some um egoic kind of um, tension to move in and to lose that kind of peace of mind and serenity a little bit and to become more focused and focused on getting what you want. The 14th sees the moon actually opposing Neptune and the moon is still in Leo so again that fiery energy it's moved into the second house of the physical uh, the material world so that trend of kind of egoic energy is strengthening on the 14th and it opposes Neptune. So what that means is that you've discovered what you love at the beginning of this week between the 11th and 13th and now what happens is that your ego tries to perfect that and your ego says I love this but I don't like this, I don't like C, I don't like the third thing and that's your ego trying to kind of spoil things for you. So what you need to do is just focus on the achievement of actually discovering what it is you love and don't try and change it. Accept it for the way it is and um, don't improve on something that you already care about because your ego is saying you have to improve on it for if you really love something but what happens in truth is if you do that you'll turn around and say if this was true love I wouldn't have had to change it anyway. So just kind of for the 14th think hands off uh, acceptance and just connect to it in a in a positive way. The 15th of March, so we're moving towards the end of the week now, uh, the moon opposes Neptune still. It's gone into Virgo, so it's becoming even more critical, but Chiron actually joins the mix. Chiron is the wounded healer. It's the thing that um, presses your buttons. If there's been any past hurt or ill feeling, it'll arise via Chiron. Okay, So what that means is that this sort of criticism, this wanting to change things, this wanting to tear the things down that you love is going to get even stronger. So it's a really, it's a week of two halves. The, the beginning of the week is building up to discovering something that you love and then moving back from that is you find the thing you love and then you try and change it and um, kind of um, your ego tries to block you from that because it doesn't want you loving things. So really, it's important to just stick with the achievement around the middle of the week, Wednesday, and not criticize, not try to change things, but just ride out this wave of criticism. What also interested me about this week is, I had a look at this, but uh, Jupiter is actually in opposition to Pluto. Um, and I looked at this, and it's been in opposition from the 4th of December 2013, and it will stay in opposition until the 25th of May 2014. And what that means is there's real transformation happening in your life, the way you expand your life, okay? So this winter, kind of spring, early summer period, is really all about transforming the way you express yourself. And... We've got a real focus on romance this week, and it could be that um, that's part of it, and that's part of the expansion process, that new loves, new romantic feelings, new people come into your life, and just be aware that that's a natural part of this transformation that's happening for you. The full moon happens on the 16th, so on Saturday, and it's the full moon in Virgo in the third house. Full moon is a culmination of things, so you're going to be at your most critical, you're going to be at your most communicative, you're going to be at your most demanding, and you're going to um, really be quite out there in terms of the way you want certain things and the way you want things to happen. So, again, applying this to the thing that you love, that you discover, that you really care about, you're going to really want to shape that in the way that it suits you. It's hard to resist the full moon. Uh, you know, the, the moon controls water, controls our bodies, which are made up mainly of water. So you're going to really feel, feel that um, pull to perfect the things you care about. You know, for better or worse, um, you know, the, the cosmos does affect the way you feel and think. Just be aware of that and try and limit it best you can because you don't want to... Um, shape things, you know, 
I mean, it's nice to have things fit, but if that detracts from the actual thing that took you there in the first place, that made you care about something in the first place, then it's, it's kind of um, counterproductive. So just kind of watch yourself, check yourself in a little bit. I read something interesting as well the other day that they did a study on this prison in England somewhere, um, and it was a male prison, and they looked at the incidents of violence that actually occurred between inmates in this prison, and they consistently found that it happened at the full moon. So it doesn't mean that the full moon makes you violent, but it makes you um, most susceptible to the cosmic energies. And because Virgo is in, um, because the moon is in Virgo in the third house, this full moon it means you're critical, you're wanting things your own way, and you will communicate those. And it will show up in the way you interact with other people. So if you find this new person at the beginning of the week that you fall in love with, make sure you don't criticize them away by the time Saturday comes around. Okay. Finally, the week ends with St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. So the one day of the year when everyone is Irish. And the moon is in Libra in the third house, which means that you're going to feel comfortable communicating with people in a harmonious, um, friendly, um, and, and really harmonizing way. And it, it signals a good day. So it's a nice day to go out and do something to celebrate and to really connect with other people in a positive way. I'm going to draw my three cards now in terms of um, the tarot influences for the week and see what the three things are that are really going to be affected the most. Okay. The first card is the um, High Priest in reverse. And that's Saturn. So it indicates that um, the shift that's going to happen in terms of um, the moon squaring um, Saturn around the 13th, that's going to be really significant. So I mentioned some friction between um, your emotional self and this kind of ego coming up, and that's going to be felt most strongly by Capricorn. So Capricorn, just be aware of that, that your ego is going to flare up in particular. The next card is um, the universe, and that's Taurus. And Taurus, you're going to feel most complete in terms of the emotional serenity that happens, and you're going to feel less troubled by the ego coming in the second part of the week, you're going to feel less critical and you're going to find it easy to maintain that emotional equilibrium. Finally, the fool in reverse. And what that means is that um, there's going to be a real wanting to pull back from this new discovery that's been made during the week. So I really see that the discovery is um, important okay the first part of the week is really important in allowing you to find something you genuinely care about and that everyone is going to experience this ego pull to pull you away from it and try and ruin it for you in some way and say well it's not the way I want it and da 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 criticize it blah 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 it's important for everyone to resist that Taurus is going to find it easy Capricorn is not going to find it so easy but the rest of the signs of the zodiac people watching this video just be aware that it's important not to criticize and to really um, connect with you know the loving discovery that you make I talk about this quite a lot but I really genuinely feel that the universe is made up of love and that the the actual particles and the building blocks of the universe are love so the truth is at the beginning of the week and the criticism and the ego that comes at the end of the week is something that can be ignored. And something that I discovered really on my trip here to um, Jerusalem and uh, all those places in Israel was that the important things, the, the connection, um, are really the unseen, the higher worlds. And I've always believed that, but it's kind of really brought it home that my physical reality and my ego and all of those things are very temporary and I don't need to pay so much attention to them and it, you know it's those feelings of love connection power strength uh, and real a sense of belonging to something bigger that's the truth of who you are who I am and, and that's what needs to be listened to and not the little niggly um, you know, ego voices of this isn't good enough and da 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 da. 
So I hope you have a good week. I hope this has given you some information in terms of what to look out for and what you'll be working with. If you want to get in touch with me, please send an email to readings at gregoryscott.co.uk or visit my website, which is gregoryscott.co.uk, and you can get in touch with me then. Have a great week, and I'll be with you again on YouTube for the daily readings and also for the weekly astrology and tarot readings. Have a really good week.